Hello YouTube. In this video, I'm going to give a quick overview of this sneaker rig solution. The core of the rig was developed with techniques from the My Learning channel. If you want to know how the core of the rig was created, I've included links to the respective My Learning channel lessons in the description below. I'm going to go over the additional work that I had to do to make this foot rig functional. All right, first, I have a foot. So if I hide the sneaker, I have a foot that I had to also worry about. And the pivot of my, the ball of my foot is not the same as the pivot of my sneaker. So that presented a challenge. All right, and then I have all these additional controls. Then I have a blend shape fix somewhere. And then I have a way to trigger that blend shape fix manually. And then I have a very important rotation dependency feature in the shin part of the sneaker. So let's start by going over the basic controls. So I have this foot roll first. And then I have this bank, the bank. These are basic foot controls that you should have on almost every rig. Then you have the lean. like a bank without that doesn't move the toe and a very simple toe wiggle and then the toe spin All right now if you watch the my learning channel he teaches you how to do this with a network of locators I had to when you go watch his it's a lot simpler than what I've done over here at some point in time I realized that I may need different pivot points uh, for certain parts, I would end up creating two pivots points, and then I eventually settled on one. So I called it corrective pivot point. Like here, this pivot point that allows me to uh, sort of do like a toe raise is different from where the actual toe is. Right? Initially, I started off here, and I was like, I decided I wanted to be on the ground somewhere, right there. Right? So that's why this network is a little messy, and. I added these viewport controls myself, but the way the actual uh, lesson teaches you to do it, you put all these features as custom attributes over here. I didn't do it for the actual foot, I just cared about the sneaker because I'm going to be animating the sneaker most of the time. If uh, when it's time to do foot animation, I prefer to just go into the channel editor move my controls from there there's so many cool things here yeah this one also has all the same features for the foot so you can't see them here but the custom attributes for the sneaker uh, are hidden I locked and hid them because I can now control them in the viewport but if I go to edit and go to channel control I can grab all of them they're right there sneaker bank sneaker lean toe spin they're all here and you'll notice that they have a connection I mean, you know, like, so they're all connected all right right there so that's them now there was a little challenge because I'm moving in translation space and all these features uh, that I just showed you are in rotation space so one of the things I had to do was use some multiply divide nodes let me get to them it's a sneaker sneaker controls connection to adder here yeah. so it's a multiply divide node that uses increment multipliers so in slot one i have the translation being fed in and then in slot two i have a constant value increment multiplier that's on each control so if i select this uh, this lean control for instance there's this increment multiplier that's on the control and it's being fed into input 2 so all it's doing is I'm taking the actual translation that's input 1x multiplied by minus 5 to trigger uh, the, the lean the sneaker lean right because one unit of translation in the viewport is not enough to rotate to lean the sneaker as much as it needs to be so I have to multiply by five so it's just a way of translating the 
transferring the values in translation space to rotation space so they can produce a reasonable amount of rotation. So every single one of them has it. Okay. So the next thing I have are the is an IKFK hybrid control. You can also learn how to do that, do that on the My Learning channel. Um, just IK functionality with stretch. He actually showed how to do it for a spine. I just repurposed it for the tongue of the sneaker. All right. First time I seen somebody do this with IK FK being used at the same time. The only caveat is that the FK controls will not follow. All right. But it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. You can still get the kind of functionality you need. All right. Um, you can either decide to just commit to using the FK controls for the shot and then maybe using the IK controls judiciously like or you can just use the IK instead and then sort of clean up with the FK but you can use both it doesn't matter if it's so far away from the FK and you're moving it you can still rotate it and do whatever you have to do so that's one feature it's also over here on the ball of the sneaker but because this sneaker design extends the heel it looks It'll look weird if you are trying to plant the foot and you can't adjust this so that it, you know, it needs to feel deformable. And I also made it stretchable so maybe I can do some smearing effects. The next thing is the sneaker rotation dependency. See when I bank this foot, I'll show you from the back, you'll notice there's some fake collision happening. Notice how when I bank the foot, this is colliding with the shin and this is the other side is behaving accordingly and you go the other way same thing it's like this fake collision happening and it's also happening from front to back so when I roll the foot the back of the sneaker is colliding and then the tongue is colliding all right and all these things work and you can still use the controls on top of them so you can still use the controls all right. This is being done with set driven keys, right? And a an intermediary group that holds each of these control systems, right? So these are simple FK controls here, right? And in here, if you look at the outliner, I have this parent group that is holding it, and that parent group, you can see the rotation X has a an incoming connection. That incoming connection is coming through a set driven key. I guess you can show it in the node editor, but it doesn't really, I don't really need to. I'll rather show, let me show the joints of this thing. A very complicated, messy joint system. But this resultant foot, when it, depending on how much it's rotated, uh, these groups will make a choice to rotate, right, in the correct direction. So it, it really helps because you don't I don't want to have to rotate that every time I pose the foot if you're interested let me know I'll create a short tutorial about how to do it it would be it won't be too long it's a very simple system so the last feature is the morph target so I'm going to show you what this sneaker looks like when you bend the foot without the morph so if I if I bend the foot or trigger anything that causes the foot to bend, the way the weight painting is done, and I'll show you the weight painting for this shortly, but first let me turn off this morph fix. So this morph fix is happening. Uh, it's all of these guys. Okay, so if I grab all these and I de-trigger them. The way the weighting is done in order to create def believable deformation, I need this part to go with the joint chain here and this part to stick with the side joint chain. So let me bring back the joints. Let me do viewport joints. All right. So if I was to select this, for instance, and I was to go to weight painting, um, and let me find this joint and go right click select influence this is how much influence it has and for the other side for this the side shin it has this type of influence 
there is no way to get it to look believable as it deforms. I need all these parts to stay with this joint and I need all the other parts to stay with that. Only thing that needs to share influence is this nylon webbing. And this is the best I'm gonna get, right, as far as deformation. So this is something that required a corrective blend shape. And that's what this is right here, all right? But I have to make sure it's triggering at the right time when this back joint bends. Let me show you my blend shape group or shift H. And it's out here somewhere. Yeah, right there. And it's there. It's. I did a tutorial about how to do uh, corrective uh, clavicle anatomy and it's pretty much the same process. You create a blend shape and you come over here and adjust the vertices till you get the correct look. And then I use a set driven key to drive it. Now, the one thing with set driven key, you do have limits. You can set a set driven key to continue executing well after we were, the point you've specified. But in this case, in that case, you're you're rolling the dice on what type of deformation you're going to get. So as this thing keeps going, I lose uh, this nice deformation, this nice believable deformation straight uh, deformation that's supposed to happen when a sneaker is in this position. So if I was to keep pushing, it's no longer there. And that's why it, it, does, it doesn't know what to do. The blend shape is getting confused. So I created a manual tool. Well, actually I should actually say this, the way this is being done, looking at this joint chain and there's a locator here, and there's a locator over here. And depending on how close they are, it triggers that blend shape. So actually, I, I made a mistake. It's not actually triggering with the rotation of this joint. It's looking at two locators and how close they get. If I rotate and I trigger, so you see these two are getting close. These are just visual indicators to show where the locators are, right? They're just visual controls, but, right? but the locators are actually hidden. So when the locator is, when they are sitting right on top of each other, as you can see over here, then this thing is fully triggered. Now, when it goes beyond, right, and I need to trigger it, I've made it so you can, these controls have charge of the locator system and I can manually move it to force it to trigger, right? Because again, it needs to be perfectly superimposed on top of each other to trigger this perfect deformation, right? And it's also on the other side, like this is also really clean, right? So that was just another interesting thing that I had to do all right and with this control system i can also create a tutorial to show how to do that if you're interested let me see if i can show the locators yeah they're just it's very simple they're just parented under these controls so they're moving right there that's one locator all right and then there's another one there one interesting thing i could show is how it works in the node editor. Window, node editor, bookmark, sneaker, buckle fix, distance locators, yeah. So it's just looking, the, both of the locators are pumped into this distance distance node, and depending on the dis, distance here, well, actually outputs a distance value. When you get that distance value, that constantly changing value is what's being used to trigger this blend shape uh, that has parameter range from zero to one. All right, so it's a very interesting system. If I switch to FK, I have a regular FK joint chain for both the sneaker and the foot. The foot shows and hides with the foot. I've wired it into this um, hiding system here. So yeah, I can't believe it actually worked with these two chains here but it does yeah anyway so that's it that's a overview of the sneaker rig if you're interested let me know and i'll make a tutorial about whatever you request all right take care